Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with Surprise, an Inktober video. I know I totally fell off the wagon and been slacking off big time, but I've got one done today, and I used um, the new Incredible inks from Jane Davenport, and I'm going to kind of compare them with the mermaid markers and cross-reference them at the end of the video. In case you're interested, you can stick around for that. So I started off with the, um, I'm using the Incredible fountain pen, and I put fountain pen ink, and I tried to find the brand of the fountain pen India ink that I'm using, but like, honestly, it's like some um, no name generic brand because like all it says is pen and ink safe for fountain pens India ink honestly there's like no brand name on that bottle so it was in a square bottle great stuff it just no company wants to own up to producing it apparently but that's what I used in this pen and uh, it's working out really well so I'm actually using yesterday's Inktober prompt, which is juicy, and I love that word. That word is like one of my most used adjectives, whether I'm talking about a marker, an ink pad, a paint. I, I love the word juicy, so I'm like, I've got to do something for this, and I was going to do a pomegranate, but they're not in season yet here in Maine, and they're not, they don't grow in Maine, but they're not in season, and I couldn't find a good reference photo for it, so instead I thought I would draw these donuts that are um, covered with fruit. I thought they were really cute. I'll, I'll link the reference photo down below. I found it on the photo sharing site Upsplash, which has um, commercial use on royalty-free artwork, so you can check that out. It's a good resource, and I just thought these donuts with frosting and fruit looked amazing, and then I had a really bad sweet tooth after I was done um, <laughs> I was done painting these. So I um, sketched this with the India ink, like I mentioned, and I did not heat set it, so some of this ink might smear a little bit because I didn't really give it any time to dry, but I figured on the donut part it didn't really matter because I just wanted that kind of neutral tone anyway. Anyway, so I'm using the color tinsel in water to do the base color of the donut. So I had kind of like a tan and then I'm using some of the um, hot cocoa ink to put some shadow in there. Uh, the inks, I, I started off kind of diluting them quite a bit. So the palette that I'm using, I put a little dropper full of ink in each of the wells and then I would use the other empty wells for adding water or because I did have to dilute some of these down or mixing colors. Um, I am not very used to using inks in the bottles because I it's kind of an ordeal. I have to take them out of the bottle, put them in a palette, um, then I have to like either use them up or you know put them back in the bottle. It just seems like an ordeal. So um, so I don't tend to do that too often. So I'm going to be putting a few of these inks into ink brushes, like water brushes, and um, that way I will actually use them more. So I'm just going through with this. Uh, this is watermelon, which is kind of like a pinky red ink. And I am just doing the lighter red shades on these um, fruits. So I did the little pomegranate seeds. I did the cherry, parts of the cherry, and I did some of this um, strawberry. Now the thing about ink versus watercolor is that once it hits the paper, it stains. Um, whereas watercolor, you could lift it up pretty, like if you blotted it right away, you could lift it up. Or if you went in with a wet brush, you could spread it around. Um, that is not as easy to do with ink. Ink wants to kind of like grab that paper and absorb in and be permanent. Permanent. Um, I don't say permanent because ink fades, but I mean it like it grabs on tight and it's going to be tough to manipulate. So you have to kind of go over it or uh, just kind of deal with it. Just kind of be happy with what you got. <laughs> you get what you get and you don't get upset with ink. So now I'm going in with some of this uh, darker red. This is called Frida and it's more of like a crimson red. And I'm putting in those mid tones on the cherry. I want the cherry to be kind of shiny and um, painting the stem with some of this uh, bright green, I'm trying to remember what that one's called. Um, but at the end of this video, I'm actually going to be going over the inks and the mermaid markers. And because I think some of these inks are close enough to refill your mermaid markers with. So if you've been running out and you want to keep using your mermaid markers, it's a great solution. Um, hopefully there'll be refills for those coming up. But until now, I mean, that's, I think it's a good a good solution. These inks do have a little bit of a of a scent to them. It's very pleasant. It's not super strong, but if you are bothered by, like, if you would be bothered by a Mr. Sketchy Marker, you wouldn't want to use these inks because they would probably, um, they would probably bother you, but I think they're kind of a, just a faint, um, scent to them and once they dry there's no more a scent. So here was an, a situation where I was putting in watered down ink and I was thinking I'm just gonna paint in the shadows of the icing and then I'm gonna spread it around with water but I, I really didn't get the spread that I wanted when I went back in. Even though the ink wasn't dry underneath I still couldn't um, spread it around like watercolor. So but I, my, my goal for Inktober is to learn new things, so that's why I'm using the inks here. I do have a watercolor palette there only because I don't have a yellow ink, and if I had thought about it, I could have just used a yellow mermaid marker, but apparently my, I wasn't firing on all 
eight cylinders this morning. So on this one, I decided to do the super light wash of the pink and then let that dry. Then I'll go back in and put my shadows so I have a little bit better look there. So I wanted to make the flesh color for these peaches and I needed some yellow. So I used a yellow watercolor from the new Jane Denport um, watercolor palette. And uh, that worked out mixing with the ink pretty well. And um, that's kind of how I did that. I think we can often get into the trap of thinking that, well, if I don't have every color, then there's no point in me even trying this or doing this. But um, I think that if you add a new product to your collection, it should make your other products more useful. So if you're not sure about inks, don't go buy them. I'll buy a bottle or two of colors you think you're gonna use a lot and use them with other supplies that you have, like your watercolors, um, and then see if they add value to your artwork. And you can tell by only a couple of those inks whether it's something that you're gonna enjoy working with or not. So um, don't be afraid. Like if you're missing a yellow in an ink, grab a watercolor, grab a marker, grab something that will um, that will fit the bill, that will kind of act as a substitute while you're using that, while you're doing that. Um, so here, I, I really like the fact that you can glaze over really well with inks. So I mixed a darker purple and I think I used one of the purples, a little bit of the uh, Frida red, and I think I maybe even touch a brown there to get that super dark um, blackberry color and I also pulled some of that into that cherry on the edges. Now at this stage I am drying in between colors because I want to make sure they don't feather. Now my yellow uh, in the peach flesh wasn't quite yellow enough so I just glazed over with the yellow straight from the pan and added some of that into the strawberry too. That's a great thing about the inks even though they're not like a permanent ink meaning they're not indelible they do grab that paper so well that you can glaze over with watercolors and not really have a big mess. So now I'm using uh, some pens these are the acrylic paint pens the paint over pens to add some mid-tone highlights. So these would be not the super, super bright highlights. They're more the um, kind of like reflected highlights here and just lightening up areas that need it, like the flesh on that strawberry. It was really quite, quite white from the reference photo and highlights on the uh, frosting there. So I'm just trying to go through and kind of brighten up spots that need brightening. And uh, now I realize that I totally forgot the shading on that blueberry, so I'm going in with um, some watercolor to do that. I have to say, I'm much more comfortable with watercolor than ink. Um, so it was nice to kind of have that palette handy in case I felt like I wanted to kind of dip into it. I did there too. I grabbed some of that red ink from the, the new watercolor palette. And um, I want to add a shadow and I knew that if I messed it up, if it was watercolor, I'd be able to do something about it. So I'm mixing a couple of the colors, um, like the kind of cobalty blue color and the um, kind of like light red color, which is like a kind of a earthy pigment together to get this really soft um, granulating gray. And I'm just using this uh, angled three quarter inch brush to just put a kind of a soft shadow around there just to give them a little bit of a place to sit in the composition here. And, um, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, I decided that I could use some brighter highlights, so I grabbed my Dr. Peach Martin's Bleed Proof White, and I put it in a well of that palette and added some water to it. That white is super opaque on its own, and I just wanted to kind of give a little more body to the frosting that were on the donuts here. By mixing the water into that Bleed Proof White, it gives me that kind of glaze and uh, subtle transparency that just lets me slightly affect the colors underneath but not change them a lot. So there's a little tip for you. I, it, that's not how it's meant to be used. It's meant to be used as kind of like final highlights straight out of the bottle. Um, but I find this to be an extremely useful way to manipulate it. And then you also have the option of that being a super opaque white gouache that you can go in and use for final highlights. So Bleed Proof White, white is an awesome product product um, that you can use for that. I'll try to remember to link everything down below um, so that you can find it. Of course, the white gel pen is a great way to give you super bright white highlights, especially if you want to get in with a lot of little detail. Um, the thing with inks, if you are doing your highlighting straight away, it will um, it will let some of that ink leach up into your uh, into your gel pen, so you might have to let it dry completely and go back in on top and give it another brightness. I love watercolors for the depth of color and the interesting mixes I can get, and I did go make some green, some earthy green to go in and um, adjust some of those colors. And, um, you know, I, I like to go in, maybe adjust my values, going with a little bit of darker red there, and just uh, kind of 
finishing up the piece. So here you can see it all done and um, I hope you enjoy it. Now if you want to stick around and uh, listen to the end of the video, I'm going to compare the new Incredible Inks with the Mermaid Markers in case you've been looking for refills for your Mermaid Markers. Some of these are going to work. So um, stick around if you want to hear about that. I wanted to pop in and share with you some experimentation that I did after I was done my artwork here. So um, you probably saw this like little palette that I had my inks in. Um, the reason I don't use bottled inks very often is because I have to put them into something to use them because I don't like to dip right into the bottle in case I contaminate it when I'm mixing colors. So I used the droppers to drop ink in here and then I was able to use the droppers to fish out the pure ink and put them back in the bottles. Um, I was pretty careful to clean my brush in between colors so that worked out all right but that's more work than what I want to do typically when I'm creating and what I really liked was how much these inks remind me of the mermaid markers and I liked using the mermaid markers and I thought why don't I look through and see what colors, if any of these colors would overlap. And um, so I had swatched out these originally on some watercolor paper, and then I went with my mermaid markers and tried to find pretty close um, duplications of color, and some had some pretty close colors. And so then I just um, decided to swatch them out a little neater here so I could share them, my information with you. Um, they're not perfect matches, and if you want a perfect match, I would just wait and see if Jane comes out with um, mermaid marker refills but if you are have used them up and you really just want to get back to creating um these are the closest um cross colors i could find so for the color frida um the new octopus mermaid marker is pretty close it's a little bit more crimson where frida is a little bit more orangey but they're pretty close uh, especially if you were to water down the octopus it's pretty close to frida um, for watermelon, I found that coral was a pretty close, uh, or for the coral mermaid marker, watermelon's fairly close. It's a little pinkier where coral's a little more orangey. You can see that really when you have them side by side. Fairy floss didn't really have a, a, um, direct, uh, color that I could find. Um, and it could be, it could be possible that I'm missing a couple of mer mermaid markers because I was counting and it seems like I should have an even number and I have an odd number. So one could have went on a little adventure on me. And if that's the case, then if you know there's definitely a color that's more close to fairy floss, let me know. I thought starfish was going to be more close, but once I swatched it out on this paper, it looked more red. But when I did it over here, it looked more more pink so the paper can kind of affect the way the color looks i think which is kind of strange but i found conch the new conch marker was very close but it's lighter so it would be like fairy floss plus white i mean i'm sorry plus water um very licious really didn't have a good match gills was probably the closest but that's a little bit more maroony violet syrup was probably closest to jellyfish jellyfish is less saturated actually i found that berry licious and violet syrup were very close like if you had berry licious and you added water and a touch of brown to it that would give you like the violet violet syrup color um blueberry and blue bottle were pretty close they look closer on my my cotton watercolor paper swatch for whatever reason um you know, the inks and the papers react differently on different papers. Um, Fresh Air and Byron Bay were pretty close. They look a little different here, but when I did it on the cotton and I put the mermaid marker out and I spread it out with some water, I thought those looked really close. Like the Byron Bay is a little darker here. Uh, it is there too. But once I added water, it was pretty close to Fresh Air. So I don't know if you'd want to put that ink in there being a little bit lighter, but, um, but you know, that's your call. It's just a solution and an option if you're running out of ink and you just want to keep on going. Um, I thought Siren and Mermaid Tail were really close. I thought um, Limeade and Seaweed are pretty close. Seaweed, uh, Limeade, which is the bottled ink. I kept the bottled inks to the left-hand side. Um, I thought Limeade had a little more yellow in it. Seaweed's a little bit more um, of a straight green. And Tinsel really didn't have one. The closest one I could find was the new seashell color. So I think I will take Tinsel and put that in its own um, ink pen water brush so that I could have a brush of that because I think that would be really useful. And Reef and Cocoa are fairly close. Reef's a little bit darker. So depending on how many neutral tones you want. I mean, what I tend to do is um, have a just a bucket and water and a brush or I'll have a just an empty water brush and I'll spread out colors when I need a lighter gradient. Um, but that said, I just, I know I'm unlikely to use these from the bottle if I have to take the ink out every time, but if I could put them in a pen, then I'm much more likely to use them. So I thought that might help you out if you're trying to, um, if you were trying to maybe buy a few of these to use as refills in your markers, you could do that. Um, you can also use these in the pens, or any fountain pen or the incredible pen. So, um, hopefully that, you know, that can help you 
help pick what you need or give you some solution as, as far as refilling these because these are such high quality water brushes that you know you could wash them out and use them as a water brush but you probably don't need 12 water brushes or 24 water brushes depending on how many you have you might as well fill them with ink and keep on using them because if you used it up you obviously like to use it that's all i have for today thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up if you liked it until next time happy crafting